and adding their own up to the pile. What's up, guys? So, um, we're out here doing a little bit of um, a little bit of welding here, as y'all see. Um, I've been in the need of some new trap stakes, and uh, let me get this light out the way here. Yeah, but I've been needing some new uh, trap stakes, guys, and uh, since I'm making some, I figured we'd do a video showing how to make them because these do get pretty expensive, actually. Um, you can be spending anywhere from uh, 24 for a half dozen all the way up to 45 50 dollars for a dozen um, rebar trap stakes depending on what you're doing so um i figured since i'm already making these it'll be a good video uh to show you guys how to make your own uh, rebar stakes and save you some money so we're finna we're finna show you probably how to make uh two main kinds we're going to show you two other kinds we use we're going to show you how to cut them i'm going to show you how to uh, even make some without a welder and uh yeah so uh it's gonna be pretty easy pretty down to earth probably kind of a quick video so uh let me get my chop saw uh up and running and let's get down here and start making some uh steaks okay guys so let's just talk about uh materials really quick okay so when it comes to uh, uh, trap steaks for most stuff you know everybody's gonna be doing you know your coyote your raccoon beaver possum uh you know whatever uh those general things are going to really use two main types of rebar and when i say types i mean sizes so uh the general the, you know the general purpose do all you know you get it and you can trap everything with it it's half inch rebar half inch rebar is well it's rebar um reinforcing rod and a half inch diameter nothing nothing to really say about that this stuff is good for about everything you know um everybody from the lowliest possum trapper all the way up to wolf trappers use half inch rebar you know it's not ideal for everything but um uh you don't really have to worry too much if you uh if you set a half inch rebar stake on your fox set and a coyote comes you ain't gotta worry about them bending it up so um it is kind of heavy um, a lot heavier than our other option, but again, doesn't bend, pretty good, pretty cheap. You can usually get a 20-foot stick of this stuff for under $10. You should not pay more than $15, depending on where you're at. And, uh, yeah, if you're going to be making um, your stuff out of these, uh, for regular regular stakes, all you're going to need is a, uh, what's this say here, a 5 8 a 5 8 uh, steel nut, okay? It's really all you're going to need and some welding stuff. Um, if you're just making the regular ones. If you're making T-bars, you don't even need that. You just need half-inch rebar. Okay, our next one is 3 8 rebar. Now, 3 8 rebar is kind of the little brother to the uh, half-inch rebar. It's, uh, as you see, it's a smaller diameter. This stuff bends a lot easier. It really does, but it's lighter. And uh, a lot of guys are starting to move to this for coyotes. Um, they, you know, a lot of guys who walk their line and whatnot are, are weight conscious. They say um, this cross stake is just as good as half inch rebar on half the weight. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm going to try to put my personal feelings into that. But um, this is uh, traditionally more geared to smaller critters. You know, your uh, three eighths is generally for like your, uh, you know, raccoon, fox, uh, areas you're probably not going to get a coyote or something. But this is, again, kind of your uh, smaller critter rod, your uh, T-bar rod, stuff that's just not going to have a whole bunch of, you know, super, um, you know, super hard applications to go for it. But it is pretty light. It's made just like your half inch, so it grips pretty good. And if you're going to decide to make uh, make your uh, stakes with this, all you need is a, uh, you need a half inch nut, okay? And uh, with your rebar stakes, they uh, you got three general sizes, right? Uh, for you guys who don't know, just getting in the trap, you have three general sizes. You have an 18, a 24, and usually a 30 to a 36, depending, right? Um, quick breakdown of that is your 18s, these are 18s. This is basically all I ever freaking use. Um, your 18s are generally your, um, your dry land stakes. That's for your... Um, you're uh, just general use, right? You're a uh, pretty good ground. Your ground's not super hard, not super soft. It's uh, it's just your do-all steak. If you're gonna just have a bunch of steaks, um, usually gonna be you know uh, ground trapping steaks. You're usually gonna be 18 inches, and that's for both sizes. Your 24s are more of your multi-purpose stakes or your softer ground stakes you know a lot of guys just run 24s because their ground conditions can go from uh 
you know, really good, like I was just talking about, the kind of soft where it's not holding, where 18 just, just not, it's not feel like it's holding good enough. So that's where your 24s kind of come into play. It's kind of your medium ground, you know, deal, or where you're thinking you might get kind of a larger animal and you really want to have an extra holding power, right? Then you have your 30s. I don't really have a 30 because I never really use 30s. Your 30s, as far as ground trapping goes, your 30s are like, those are kind of rare instance things. Those are for guys who like, you know, they trap on like swamp islands or they're on sandbars, really sandy, really soft soil. Because they have to be pretty freaking long to get down in that soil and uh, get that good hold in there. Even cross staking. There's some guys that have to cross stake 30s, 34s, even 36s at some times. So, um... Those are kind of your uh, average uh, lengths for ground trapping. As far as water trapping with our T-bar stakes, which I'll show y'all in a minute. Um, they're pretty long, so I didn't want to put them on camera just yet. But uh, for water trapping, you're, um, you're generally looking at 24 inches up to around uh, probably 36 to 42 at times. But uh, mainly that's because most water trappers, they're in, you know, generally muddy or... Um, mud soft ground river bottom stuff like that so they have to be longer um i have seen water trappers who are like really rocky or uh like a uh, riffraff type current not current but uh river bottoms where they're just jamming their stakes in between like um big rock cracks and stuff so they really only need like 18 but um for most water trapping applications a 30 is a 30 to a 36 is kind of your your uh multi-purpose type deal so oh uh, that being said now we kind of understand what we need for what applications um now we can actually get to cutting our material real quick okay guys quick tip here as you see uh rebar generally the cheapest way to buy rebar is in the 20 foot lengths right um there are some places some establishments that will sell in shorter lengths um i know especially a lot of home improvement stores hey china um a lot of home improvement stores will sell it in like the small pre-cut pieces that look almost exactly what you need but guys don't do that because it's going to be a lot more expensive i know for a fact there's a couple places that they uh sell like, you know a uh, pre-cut like five foot lengths and they sell for ten dollars and then right outside the store they'll have a 20 foot piece for twelve dollars don't fall for that trick so a cool, cool little tip for you guys is when you're buying the uh, full length pieces and you don't have a full trailer because I know a lot of us don't have a full trailer. Even some of us don't even have a truck. That's cool. Don't worry about it. What you do here instead of going buying a trailer is go get you one of these um one of these cordless angle grinders. Guys, this is a Bauer. Um I think I bought it from Harbor Freight because you guys know I'm cheap. See this is the Bauer one. And for this with the battery I think I dropped like 80 bucks. Okay, that seems like a lot, but guys, this is a really useful tool, especially if you're, um, especially if you're a farm kid, it's really good to have, you can get up under uh, a lot of stuff, sharpen farm implements with it, don't have to worry about the cord, really good to have, and heck, if you can't afford one of these, just carry an extension cord and a uh, regular angle grinder with a cutoff wheel on it, because most of the time, if you ask them, when you buy it, hey, can I cut this into smaller pieces real quick, they have no problems doing it, and rebar is not hard to cut at all, it's like, 10 seconds with a decent cutoff wheel. You cut it in half and then, you know, you can fit it in the back of your truck or you can cut it in fours and fit it uh, through your car. Trust me, I've been there, I've done it. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Um, but preferably if you have a truck, take a truck. Um, another thing is if you're buying this from a metal supply place, just ask if they can cut it for you because a lot of times um, for maybe an extra dollar, they will cut it for you. I know uh, one of the places I go to get my 3 8 rebar um, if it's not a, you know, they don't have a lot of customers, he usually, he'll just cut it for me for free. So, uh, don't be afraid to ask. Just go up there and ask them or carry you, um, your little angle grinder or whatever and just zip it real quick, cut it in half because cutting it in half to make a 10 foot, uh, or a five foot piece is so much easier to deal with than having this big, long 20 foot piece. So, um, just a little tip for you guys there, common sense to some people, but again, for some of these kids who's never done it, um, I don't mean kids, but some of the younger guys who've probably never done it, it might not have um, come across to y'all. So, just something to think about. Now, uh, let's actually get to cutting this stuff. Okay, y'all, so let's talk about cutting our material here. What can we use to cut our material? Um, when I started doing this, I was told a hacksaw. A lot of guys told me a hacksaw. Uh, guys, don't, don't use a hacksaw. 
Um, personally, um, I do like using a chop saw. This is my 14 inch industrial chop saw from Harbor Freight. Um, you guys have probably seen a pattern with me in Harbor Freight. Um, if you guys are just using this stuff to cut rebar, it works perfectly fine. Um, it's pretty cheap. I pay less than $100 for mine. I've been running it for coming up close to three years now. Works pretty good. And if you really want to, just make sure you buy the, um, make sure you just buy the little, um, insurance plan or whatever. Give them your email address. And whenever it breaks down, just bring it in. It's like an extra $10, I think, for like a two-year warranty. And whenever it breaks, just take it to, you know, just take it into your local Harbor Freight, get a new one, or send it back in. It's pretty easy to do. If you can't do that, then just go get one of Craftsman's. Um, it's either that or you can just use an angle rounder with a uh, cutoff wheel. Did that for many, many years. Works really, really good. Um, as far as safety equipment, guys, definitely put some freaking gloves on. Don't do what I do. Put on some gloves. Definitely put on eye protection. If you don't put on anything else, put on eye protection. Seriously. Also, I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys put on some kind of uh, some kind of sleeves, uh, a welding jacket of some sort, because this thing does sling sparks and uh, abrasive material, and it does kind of hurt when you get hit. So, uh, yeah. Now, I like to cut my stuff kind of in a strange fashion to some people. Um, I like to make one cut to make two cuts, if that makes sense. So um, I make two stakes and two cuts. So what I do is I um, get my piece of material here. Actually, let me get my tape measure. Okay, sorry about that. Forgot to get my dang tape measure here. But um, the way I cut my material, um, if I'm using my angle grinder or my cutoff saw here, what I like to do is um, I like to figure out what size stakes I want. Okay, I usually end up making a bunch of one size and. Um, I'll just cut out a bunch of those one day, and if I need some more, next day I'll make some more. But, uh, say I need a bunch of 18s. The easiest way I found to do this is, uh, say I need a bunch of 18s. 18 times 2, or doubling it, 18 times 2 is 36, if my math is correct, and, you know, I ain't the best at math. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to measure out 36 inches, all right? Let me find my dang Sharpie here. <laughs> Word of advice, guys, if y'all plan on doing how-to videos, make sure everything you need is exactly where it's at. Okay, but what I want to do is I want to measure out double what I need. So, I need an 18-inch stake, so I want to measure out 36. And then I'm going to mark it, right? And then I'm going to come back down halfway to 18. I want to mark that right here. There's a lot of ways you guys can mark this stuff. Some people like soapstone. Some people like to scribe. Some people like paint markers. Guys, uh, I can get a pack of these Sharpies right here at the dollar store for like, you know, like a buck fifty. So I just use Sharpies. When they dry out, I throw them away. So yeah, I got my two marks here. What I'm going to do first is, this cool thing about these chop saws, they have this uh, angular uh, thing right here we can move it to cut different angles my first cut is going to be my long cut my 36 inch or my uh my 40 my 60 whatever it's going to be my long cut so that's going to be my first set of cuts what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and just leave that at zero as y'all can see that's set at zero right there okay i'm going to leave uh my first cut at zero it's just going to be a flat cut right I'm going to go ahead and make sure my saw is going to cut where I want. And uh, lock the old girl down. There it is. Forgot which way to turn for a second there. And guys, don't worry about being super precise with this. We're making we're making rebar stays. We're not making like we're not making the next Eiffel Tower. We ain't gotta be super precise with it. Uh, some of these are probably gonna be off a little bit. Don't worry about it. All right, it's, it's gonna be cool. It's gonna work. It's gonna hold just fine. But again, first cut is gonna be my long cut, a thirty-six inch cut, and um, I just lock it down on that thirty-six inch mark. Leave it on zero.
right, so that's our first cut. As you see, we got two flat sides. We got a flat side on one end and a flat side on the other end. This end was actually stuck under dirt. I need to clean it up, but um, yeah, so that's gonna be our 36 one. And say I needed a bunch of steaks or I was planning on making a bunch of steaks, I would go through and just cut a crap load of these. Like I'll cut like 20 of them at a time. And uh, then I'll come back and do what I'm about to show you now. Okay. Oh, oh. Throw you out the way, say we got all of our 36s cut. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to slide my angle as far as I can, right? Right in this case, it's 45. I know some of these go a little more, some of them go a little less. But I'm going to try and get as much of an angle as I can. Then, I'm going to find that middle mark, my 18, which is half. Okay, there's our half. And I'm going to slide it in. And this is a little trickier. Get the cut just right. But by doing this, what we're doing is we're making the steak in. Now, a lot of people will cut these straight, and it's harder to um, pound in just a straight round cut uh, steak. Anybody who's done it knows it's kind of a pain to um, sling, uh, to uh, beat them in like that. It's a lot easier if they're cut at an angle or they're sharpened at the end. That's just how it works, physics and everything. So, um, now we got it at that angle. And again, this will be a separate process. I'll cut all my first ones and I'll come back and cut all these. So, um, that's just works for me. Maybe it'll work better for y'all if y'all would cut them and then move them and cut them and move them. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Look at there. And just like that, we got two 18 inch, roughly 18 inch, um, steak blanks made just like that. Um, as you see, pretty quick, pretty easy. Uh, now let me do one real quick, uh, and show y'all how quick it is to cut one of these out in real time, right? Hit my 36. Slide them all in. See how fast that was? That was like, what, a minute, minute 30? We'd probably be quicker if I didn't have to worry about trying to get everything in the camera. But, um, yeah, that's how I do with a chop saw. And it's the same deal with an angle grinder. And I'm actually going to show you that real quick. Hey, y'all, so now I'm going to show you how to do with an angle grinder. So, I uh, highly recommend getting a four and a half inch angle grinder. Okay? I used a four inch for a long, long time, guys. But the, uh, the four and a half is just easier to find. Um, yeah, you, you have a wider variety of, uh, your, uh, your disc for it and it's just easy to get parts for them. Uh, this is the Chicago Electric. This is the, I forgot which one this was, but I've had it for about three years now. Works just fine for what we're doing. 
Uh, you don't need a super fancy dewalt or anything. This one's this one plugs in 110 power plug and all that crap. Works great. Um, only special thing you need is you just need to have a cutoff wheel, right? These are super cheap. You can get like 10 of them for like five bucks, I think, at Harbor Freight. Make sure you're getting a metal cutting one. Okay, see how it says metal right there? Make sure you get a metal one because you do have masonry ones um, and they don't cut metal as well. You're just going to end up wasting a lot of money because they burn up real quick. So get a metal one and they zip through real good. So, uh, quick tip here. If you're cutting uh, cutting the small rebar, this is some 3.8. I'm about to make some uh, T-bars here. Make sure you kind of, your cuts are close to your vise, okay? Um, you don't want to really cut this on the ground because this will bounce. You can end up breaking these. Uh, you can, I've done it many times, but it's better to have a vice or something. And uh, make sure your cut is pretty close to your vice because if it's not, you can end up, this will end up bouncing on you. It can end up uh, catching your wheel, breaking your wheel, and you can get up get hurt. So uh, anyway, we're making our long cut. This is at 60. I need 230, so we're making a 60 cut. Right, see how quick that zip through? Rebar is just a little, I mean, the half inch rebar just takes a little bit longer. So we're going to move down here to our second cut. This is going to be our 30 cut. Now, here's the reason I kind of like the angle grinder a little more. I can get some deeper cuts with these. So um, I want kind of a, not a deeper cut, but like a more aggressive angle with these. So. And there you go, we got ourselves two 30s. That's our uh, two 30s main bodies. Now, since these are T-bars, T-bars require actually two pieces of rebar. That's really all they need. So what you're doing here is you're just making a T. Okay? And most of the T-tops are generally about five to six inches long. Sometimes down to four, but mainly five to six. The reason for that is, uh, let me get one of these traps here. I was saying the reason for it is a lot of these water traps have this big ring on them, right? And this is what you uh, stake through. And if you're using, you can't really use a regular stake because it just slips through. Whereas a T-bar, a T-bar actually catches. See, it can't, it can't get over that little T right there. Okay, a T-bar is they're usually used for. Um, T-bars usually used for holding your um, conibears bears in place. Your uh, and conibears bears have those same rings. They're used for the top ends of drowning rods. Generally, water trapping in general, right? You do not use T-bars for land trapping. So, to make your T-bar, all you need is, like I said earlier, you need two pieces of rebar. Um, you need a straight. You need a T. No reason for a T-bar is uh. A lot of times with those drowner sets and other water sets, these have to be pulled up to pull your animal back in. Or they have to be pulled up in general to retrieve your set. So uh, with these, it's a lot easier to just grab on like that, pull it up. Also, is uh, you can't push these all the way down with your hands because of the water depth sometimes. So with this flat top, that flat T-top, you can put your boot on top of that and just stomp it in the mud. And not have to worry about... Uh, puncturing your waders or your hip boots or whatever. Whereas if you're using one of these, if you uh, do something wrong, this can go through your boot. So that's another thing about T bars. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and cut. Uh, what was this? About five inch. Yeah, about five inches. Go and cut five to six inch uh, top T. And again, you cut a bunch of these. You cut a bunch of uh, your main ones. And then you weld everything together. So yeah, we'll do that off camera. I think you guys get the general gist of everything. I decided to film it anyway. So uh, what we're doing here is we're just cutting the tops for our tees. Um, I'm making mine five inches. That's just how I make mine. You can make them longer. You can make them shorter. Just whatever works for you. So um, this is a shorter piece. So I'm going to cut the very last piece off. Uh, this is only like three inches. I can't use that. So um, I'm going to make 
that cut, and I'm gonna make my middle cut, and I'm gonna be done. And uh, with your T's, you just cut them straight, so. And there you go. There's our two tops that are going to go on our uh, T-bars. So, let's get to welding. Alright, y'all. So, we're about to start welding up our stakes here. Uh, as y'all saw, it's not the most uh, complicated thing in the world. I just like explaining things. But, uh, something you kind of want to do before you put your nuts and stuff on is, while you still got your, weld, uh, your grinder out, is when we cut it, as you see, unless you're using like a bandsaw or something, you're going to have a little bitty sprue right here, right? Also, all rebar comes with these little uh, little lines on the side. So what you want to do is just take your grinder. You can change your disc out if you want. And uh, just clean that up, especially these sprues. Just knock these sprues down about half an inch, right? Don't take a bunch. You can also come down here and... Uh, clean up your ends. I like cleaning my ends up. A lot of people don't because it's going to rust off anyway, but I'm a little OCD. So, uh, all I'm going to do here is lock her down in the vise. And again, I would change my uh, head, but I've been doing this a while. If you guys have never, um, you know, tried this, change your heads out to the proper head. Uh, when I say head, you're a proper grinding this, but uh, since I'm doing this kind of quick succession, I'm just going to use the uh, cutoff wheel. I'm just going to come up here. Knock that little sprue off, and I'm going to come on the sides here. I'm going to knock these uh, little side fins off because our steak nut here. You know, because the threads on the inside, it won't go over just perfect, okay? You can knock these on, but we actually want about, if I can show you here, we want about this much steak, just this much rebar sticking above our nut. And I'll explain that in a second, but we want about that much. So we're going to come on the sides here and knock those little screws down a little bit. And uh, again, if I was doing a bunch of these, if I was doing like 30 or 40 of them, I would just go ahead and do all these in one go. Um, but now, as you see, that nut goes on. A little tack hammer here. It goes on a lot easier, a lot quicker. And you see, I got that little bit um, sticking up here. Now, another trick you can do, if you want to avoid, uh, you know, being around with a tack hammer like I'm doing, get you a piece of small pipe, about half inch pipe that'll fit right over your uh, rebar. And when you're doing this, you can just slide that pipe over and just whack it straight. And it will uh, basically center up on, uh, it'll basically center up properly. So, I didn't have any, I, again, this is the first time I made, I've had to make some steaks in a while, so. I couldn't find my whacking pipe, but that works pretty good. So now, if you have a welder, what we're going to do here, actually, let me move the camera in closer. Now that we got our uh, steak, our uh, nut the way we want it here, and I'll explain why we did this again in a little bit. Um, we're going to take, we're going to go ahead and weld the top point. Now you can go on the bottom, especially if you're not um, super sure in your welds, go around the bottom and weld it too, but. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take me a 6011. If I can stop dropping my rod here. I'm going to take me a 6011 here. I'm running 60 amps. And I'm just going to burn around. Okay. You only have to burn around. I just like doing it because it helps me uh, practice my welding. But really, you can just uh, do a good tack here. A good tack here. Really burn them in. Do like four tacks and that's it. 
But uh, I'm gonna burn it in real quick and get back with you on the camera. Okay, and there we go, guys. As you see, try and get my camera to focus here. Oh boy. All right, as you see, guys, not the prettiest weld, but a 611 burnt her on in. If I can get it to focus, yeah. A 611 went and burnt it all in there. Yeah, we got one completed stake. Now, the reason. The reason I was saying leave that little uh, nub right there is because that's what you're actually going to be hitting when you're uh, nailing this in the ground. You're actually going to be hitting that. You don't want to just hit your uh, nut. Your nut is mainly there to keep your uh, your trap ring from sliding off. So um, and it gives it something to kind of swivel around on the bottom. So with this right here, you're actually peening that metal, and by the time you actually get to the stake, it's basically just peened over, right? And it can't come off. So that's why you leave it there. Also. So you got these traps in the ground and you're trying to pull them out. What you can do is, um, I like to thank Beeve over on Trapper Man for this tip. You can take a pair of vice grips if you leave them like this and you can snap your vice grips on this little top end right here. Snap that vice grip on and you can spin it around a few times, loosen it up and pop it right on out. So uh, he told me that a while ago. Uh, he, he tells everybody that one little trick right there and it works really good. So I forgot to tell you all that. So um, that's how you make a basic ground, um, ground stake. Now, some people do like adding washers to them, like, uh, yeah, some people like adding washers to them like this, right? I personally don't like to, um, like doing this. I, it's just me. I don't like doing that. But if you want to, all you got to do is get the right size washer. Make sure it's a thick one. You see, this is a pretty thick washer right here. We want to make all our stuff, um, go ahead and make it heavy duty while it is. So we won't have to keep replacing these yearly. Um, and just weld it on there. That's all you got to do. Just slip it through the bottom and, uh, weld it on to your nut. See, pretty simple job there. Also, I see a lot of people just using just straight washers on here. And uh, one problem I've I've seen after talking to them and they've told me is if you mess up and hit that washer by accident and you weld it a little too hot, you can end up breaking that washer and have to re-weld it. So um, I just think the nuts are superior in that uh, aspect. And uh, yeah, so again, that's our finished ground anchor. If you want to add a washer, maybe you're running snares, you don't want your uh, snare swivel swooping over. Just uh, slip on a slip on the washer there and tack it on. So uh, you don't have to use a stick welder either. You can use a MIG, a TIG. I, I did many, many, many on many stakes using just an old flux core from Harbor Freight. Just make sure your weld stick. So uh, I'm going to show you guys how to make these without a welder in a hot second. Uh, let's just do the T bars. Okay, uh, time for T bars now. Yeah, and these are three eighths uh, T bars. You can make three eighths or half inch, but as I said earlier, the three eighths are kind of the more common ones to use. And it's extremely simple to uh, weld these up. All you're gonna do is uh, lock down your vise there. Make sure your electrode's going good, and take one of your uh, T's right here. Go try to center it up. That looks pretty center. And I'm just going to weld that crease right here, that uh, my pointer, my uh, fancy dancy pointer right here. Actually, let me move you up. And uh, basically, you're going to try to just weld that crease in right there real good. Make sure you fuse these two pieces right there and do it on the back side. And you're basically done. So uh, let me get me, uh, put me a new fresh rod in real quick and we're going to do that. So a uh, quick little tip, when you're welding your tops on, uh, just hold them in a pair of vice grips. And it just makes it easier to, uh, you know, easier to do. So that looks about centered up. Okay, burn it in pretty good right there. And there you go. As you see, this is actually kind of not right. 
Um, I didn't really center it too good, but uh, you guys get the gist of what we're doing here, I hope. So um, that's how you make your T bars. And now I'm going to show you how to make these. Well, at least to make your ground anchors without a welder. Okay, guys, so now I'm going to show you how to make these stakes. Um, really, just your ground trapping stakes. You cannot make um, your T bars really effectively without either a forge or welding okay you can make them with a forge but you want to like bend them over and bend them back again you can do it but um it's just easier to weld them um another tip for you guys if you guys really need some t-bars um especially younger dudes uh go up to your local votech or whatever and just have all the pieces cut out and just show them hey i need you did well these little pieces on top of this piece of metal. I just need to weld them all real good. They ain't got to be pretty. And um, a lot of times, uh, the Votech teacher, the welding instructor, auto body teacher, whoever's welding, uh, they'll let one of the students come do it for you. Uh, just don't, you know, have like 300 of them or something. It's uh, That's a good way to do it if you uh, can't weld. But um, for your ground trapping stakes, you don't need much at all. All you need is your rebar, your grinder, a hammer, uh, an anvil, not even an anvil, just a big hunk of something to hammer on, and your nuts. Now, one of the big secrets is, is using these. Now, what is this? This is the same nuts we're using, the same 5 8 nuts, or uh, half inch nuts, depending on what size rebar you're using. But these have been annealed. Okay, now what's annealing? Uh, annealing is basically you heat these things up, cherry freaking red, and then you just let them cool down. And what that does is it makes these super soft. Well, not super soft, but it gets them a lot softer. And you can just hammer these on, right? You can just slide these on and use your hammer and anvil to basically just crimp these on like a uh, ferrule on a snare. And I should be showing some video like right over here or whatever of how I did it. All I did was I just made a little fire um, outside. I took a hair dryer and I just uh, hit it on that fire to heat them up real quick. You can just make a regular fire and just leave them overnight. But uh, get you a good cold bed going and uh, throw a bunch of these on fire and, you know, just let them heat up like this. And they're going to be super uh, easy to crimp on. You don't have to do it like this. You can just use regular uh, regular nuts. But I found that when you anneal them, it just makes life a little easier. So, um, as you see, took my grinder and uh, grounded those fins down. So, I can just uh, slip this on a little easier here. Cool thing about this anvil it has this hole right here, and I can just uh, tap it down through this hole until it stops. So we're gonna slide that down like that. Kind of trying. Again, my OCD is kicking in, so want to make sure it's kind of straight. And uh, once we get it like this, all we're gonna do is slide on the anvil and just hammer the snot out of it. As you see, it flared out on the ends right there, but that's crimped on now, right? You got a few more good whacks, and you come on the other side and really whack it on. But that right there, you only really need to whack it on one side. That's not coming off. Okay, if a coyote can pull this off of this rebar, um, you got problems, and you probably shouldn't be messing with those critters. So, uh, yeah, that's how you do it. If all you have is a, is um, some fire, some nuts, uh, angle grinder, and some rebar. Oops. So, uh, yeah. Okay, guys. So, here we go. Um, got our uh, stakes made. Uh, I got them kind of in their uh, basic configurations. We got our two, uh, you know, two ground stakes cross-staked here on a, you know, on the uh, double stake ring here. And I got our T-bar running on a drowner. You know, your kind of classic uh, mink or muskrat drowner type deal. I just kind of threw some stuff together real quick. But yeah, uh, that's how you make your steaks, man. Uh, I know it's a really simple thing. I'll probably overcomplicate it a little bit. But really try want to try and get through uh, a lot of good information for you guys. And uh, I hope it helped you all out. So if you guys are finding these videos good, informative, and really helping you out, please do me a favor. And uh, it takes like five seconds. If you have a YouTube channel and you're able to, hit the like button it should be like right, right right down there below the video like right down there hit that like button okay and if you uh want to keep seeing what i'm doing with the traps and the casting and the fishing and all that weird stuff i do 
do me a favor and hit down there on the uh, subscribe thing okay just subscribe to my videos uh it doesn't cost you anything it's completely free to subscribe all it's going to do is um when you uh when i post a video you're going to see it so um yeah and it helps my it helps with my analytics it helps my videos get seen more so uh, if you guys again like what i'm doing like subscribe if you guys got some critiques or something and when i say critiques i mean critiques not just talking about how good of a trapper you are and how crappy i am <laughs> um just uh you know leave me in the comments i read all my comments and i try to answer most of them um on my newer stuff so uh, with that being said hope this uh helped you guys out and uh yeah y'all take these